Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, therefore I apologise in advance if I stumble over my words going forwards, and indeed if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well. If there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2021 related video here on my channel, and today I am talking about the Dark Horses of this year's upcoming contest, which is scheduled to take place next month at the Ahoy in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Now, of course, what I mean by a dark horse is a song, act or country that is perhaps at this moment in time not expected to push for the win, but by the time May comes around, maybe we will start thinking that actually it's a potential winner. Or it's a song, act or country that we are perhaps not expecting to qualify, but then once we've seen the rehearsal footage, all of a sudden they'll just come up on the rails and we'll start saying that actually they're a country to keep our eyes on. So, saying that, I'm going to just go through the dark horses that I think will be dark horses this year, potentially. Feel free to agree or disagree with me in the comments below, and as always, links in the description to my other social media pages too. Check them out if you so wish. Beginning with semi-final one, which will be on Tuesday the 18th of May, I'm beginning with Slovenia. This is going to be song two on the night, Amen by Anna Soklic. Now, of course, had last year's contest gone ahead, it would have been Anna Soklic as well, with another ballad called Voda, which means water. However, that song didn't seem to receive a huge amount of attention at all. I think a lot of people expected it to potentially finish last in last year's first semi-final, had it taken place. Anyway, Anna internally selected by Slovenia this year. Amen is great. There's very little to fault. She sounds great every single time. She's going to nail it in Rotterdam. I imagine the staging will be very similar to how she performed this way back a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was, um, when she released the song with the white dress and everything. Um, she doesn't really need anybody else on stage with her. I imagine that she'll be totally in control of the performance. The vocals are absolutely strong enough. And it builds up nicely too to a rousing, uplifting finale with this sort of choral element in the back. The issue here is that it's on early, sandwiched between two songs that will arguably be much more visually appealing, Lithuania and Russia. So Anna has a big task ahead of her. What will work in her favour, I'm sure, is a huge amount of jury support. They certainly shouldn't be ignoring this entry, because like I said, there's so little to fault here. So I'm sure points will come from many nations. As for public support, that might be lacking. So as such, there might be some discrepancy in the results. We'll find out after Eurovision this year is over and done with. Is it going to qualify? I really don't know. I don't see it happening now purely because of the running order. But stranger things have happened. And if everything comes together on the night... I don't see any reason why Slovenia couldn't go through. Remember in 2018 with Falane by Lea Sirk? I don't think too many people expected Slovenia to go through to the final in Lisbon, but that's exactly what happened. Maybe it could happen again with a ballad this time. We'll wait and see. The next dark horse is Australia, song 5 in semi-final 1. This is Technicolor by Montaigne. Again, had last year's contest gone ahead, it would have been Montaigne because she won the Australian selection show last spring with Don't Break Me. She's back with Technicolor. This is very different. It's in this sort of hyper-pop style, very Marina and the Diamonds, that sort of thing. There's a real energy to this song. It builds up very nicely as well. Montaigne's vocals could be a little bit stronger. Uh, but I think there'll be a fair amount of energy on stage for this one. Uh, might be very similar to how she performed this at the Sydney Cricket Ground, the videos on YouTube, of course, where she's in a white outfit and she's got two female dancers with her in white outfits as well. There'll be a lot of colour, maybe some pyros. This is a little bit underrated, no doubt about it. However, it could be Australia's first NQ. It's a very tough semi-final. There are other songs that are gaining a lot more attention at the moment, and no doubt will do in May. Uh, how neutrals will perceive this, you know, listening to it, listening to it, seeing it for the first time in May, I really don't know. But it might fare better than we all expect. Maybe the juries will just really appreciate this. Maybe there'll be more public votes than we all expect. It's hard to say. 
I think Slovenia is more of a dark horse than Australia at this point. The next dark horse, well, I'm tempted to say Ireland, but I'll leave them, because the more I think about it, the more I do consider Ireland a qualifier, and I don't think that would be an upset, whereas perhaps Slovenia going through, and maybe going through with some ease, that could be considered an upset. Um, <clears throat> the next one is Norway. I'll only briefly talk about the Norwegian entry. Of course, Tix beat out Kano, the big fan favourites, in MGP a couple of months ago. Uh, Fallen Angel, the name of his song. He's a huge star in Norway, but of course, Norwegians can't vote for him in the first semi-final. So where are the votes going to come from? This song really does play it safe. It's very generic. That's not a bad thing. We've had generic songs farewell at the contest before. Um, how he's going to stage this, I imagine it will be very similar to MGP with the wings on his back and the chains and the other dancers. I just wasn't a fan of how it came across. Uh, I just thought it was maybe a little bit over the top, truth be told. He's got an all right voice. Um, I think that he's quite likeable, uh, but I can't help but feel that he's let down by this song, which I think he wrote himself. I, it's just really quite plain. However, maybe people will really gravitate towards this and how it comes across on stage. Uh, if Norway go through, I wouldn't deem it a shock. And if this song did well in the final... I also wouldn't consider that a surprise. Maybe you would. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I did say in my previous video that if we have a surprise winner, perhaps it could be the Norwegian entry. I don't think for one minute Norway will win, but you never know if the other big hitters, Switzerland, Bulgaria, etc., if they mess up this year for whatever reason, maybe there'll be a path for a song like Fallen Angel to take the win. We'll wait and see. The next dark horse is Belgium. This is a song that I think ultimately may just may just end up being completely forgotten on the night. It's The Wrong Place by Hoover Phonic. Massively experienced band, female lead vocals, and then the two guys as well. Really don't know how they're going to stage this, because it's not super up-tempo and it's not really low-key. So there is a fine balance here. You have to get it spot on. It's in between Croatia and Israel, two up-tempo numbers. Um, I really liked the Belgian entry this year, more so than last year, but I also didn't mind Release Me. Uh, this has a very cool atmosphere to it. I know that the lead vocals will be great. And it's a real change of pace. It's going to stand out because it's so different from what comes before it and what comes after it. I don't think Belgium's going to win. Certainly this might not qualify, but if it does qualify and end up you know, getting a respectable place in the final. Again, I don't think any of us can be really too surprised by that because it's a decent piece of music that I personally feel is being underrated at the moment. So, we've had Slovenia, we've had Australia, I've touched on Ireland, we've had Norway, we've had Belgium. I think that's probably it for semi-final one. I could mention Romania. Romania is such a difficult one at the moment for me because... In between Israel and Azerbaijan, we know Roxanne's great. I've got a pretty vague idea as to how it's going to be staged. But it's a song that could easily be forgotten about on the night. Absolutely. If it doesn't stand out in the recap, oh dearie me, it could be bye-bye Romania once again. No finals since Yodelit in 2017, it's worth saying. Um, but also, this could be top ten in the final. Really difficult to predict. Anyway, that's semi-final one. Semi-final two. Dark Horse number one, Czech Republic, song three, on Thursday the 20th of May. This is Benny Cristo with Omega, or Oh My God if you prefer. Uh, I wouldn't say this is underrated. I think a lot of fans are really enjoying it, actually. Uh, last year, K Mama was a song that I just couldn't get into one bit. This is much more accessible. It's a lot more radio chart friendly, that sort of thing. We know he's going to bring the energy. We know he's going to sing pretty well on stage in Rotterdam. And the Czechs just seem to be going from strength to strength in the contest a little bit. Let me know your thoughts on that. Anyway, this song, great music video. It's very catchy. I imagine it's going to be a very colourful performance as well. 
We know the Czechs may well end up with quite a bit of jury support. Remember Lake Malawi in 2019, friend of a friend, did very well with the juries, but then really awfully in the public half of the results in the final, which was surprising. Did very well in the semi-final too, friend of a friend. Anyway, there's no reason why Benny Cristo can't do as well, as far as I'm concerned. I could see this song push for a top 10 finish in the final, absolutely. But I could also see the Czech Republic maybe fare a lot worse than we think they will. It's another difficult one to predict. And I wouldn't say the Czechs are the biggest dark horse at all this year. I've seen people online say that this is underrated. I disagree. I don't think this is underrated. I think that this is a song that maybe people are just on the fence about because they don't know if it's a sure qualifier and they don't know... Uh, if it's going to just miss out on the final, things like that. We'll wait and see. I've said that enough times in this video. The next Dark Horse, Song 5, Austria. Vincent Bueno with Amen. So both Amens this year could be Dark Horses, absolutely. I think if there's going to be a song that gets more jury support, it's the Slovenian Amen. But this version by Vincent Bueno, it's really nice. I'm surprised it's not liked a little bit more by fans. Maybe it is a little bit forgettable, a little bit bland. But Vincent, I think he sings it quite well in the studio version. I think it's quite a touching song. Builds up nicely, has this sort of uplifting message to it, I guess. I don't think it's going to qualify. But again, if some of the big hitters flop on the night, I'm looking at Switzerland, I'm looking at Bulgaria, I'm looking at Finland, I'm looking at San Marino. If they flop on the night, Austria might just sneak in. I certainly don't think this would be a sure qualifier. Uh, maybe 8th, 9th, 10th, uh, if indeed Vincent progresses. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've had Austria win the jury vote in the grand final before, which nobody really expected. And then we had North Macedonia win the jury vote in 2019. Could we have another surprising jury favourite this year? Could it be Austria again? I don't know. I doubt it, but you just never know what those juries are thinking. The next Dark Horse, I'm very tempted to just talk very briefly here about Iceland, because Iceland, I don't think anybody's expecting them to win. I'm not expecting Iceland to win. I don't think this song will come remotely close to winning. But you just don't know. Ten years by Dadri and Gagna Magnet, Think About Things just became this huge viral hit, and it may well have won last year's contest quite comfortably. We just will never know. Ten years is not gaining nearly as much attention. And I don't think it ever will. There's that awkward choreography. It's obviously him and his backing group. His sister's part of it, I believe. His wife. And this song is about the relationship with his wife. It's very cute. Very disco. Very charming. And if you have a charming song at the contest, you're in with a pretty decent shot of getting a respectable result. I've said that before. There's another charming entry in this semi-final I'll talk about in a minute. But yes, Iceland. Could that song win? I highly doubt it. But it's a dark horse. I don't think we can rule out a surprise Icelandic victory. The next dark horse... Denmark. That's the other charming entry I'm on about. People really are starting to talk about this one a bit more now, purely because it's on last in the second semi-final. And I'm not surprised it's on last, because it's a fun closing song. Up-tempo, yes, it's dated, yes, it sounds like it's straight out of the 1980s, but actually, it might put a smile on your face. Two likeable guys, really going for it. Fear of Lama with Uvros Pachinanden. Uh, practice on each other is the translation. It's the first Danish language entry this century, so that's got to be a pro up It's got to be applauded. <clears throat> I really like this, always have. Really grew on me after DMGP. I think it was perhaps the right choice in the end. Um, I don't know what's going to happen if we have the on-tape performance. Because, of course, at DMGP there was an orchestra, a small orchestra... So if the on-tape performance has to be used for Denmark, will the orchestra be there? I don't know. Um, the studio version is not quite as good. The orchestra really elevated the live performance, as it does at San Remo, of course, for Italy and everything. Anyway, 
Uh, the fact this is on last really gives Denmark a good chance of going through. However, being on last does not necessarily guarantee a place in the final. It could be quite damaging. Remember that Switzerland, the second favourite to win, is on right before the Danish track. Um, but if this goes through, I won't be surprised. None of us should be. Do not underestimate Denmark this year. There's a place for this in the final. People will be charmed by it, I'm telling you. Remember 2019, Leonora, Love is Forever? People were charmed by it. And it, ne <clears throat> it nearly made the top ten, didn't it? So, watch out, because Denmark are coming. They're coming for votes. I mean, Finland will dish out a few points, as will Iceland. That's 12 in the bag, no doubt. Um, yeah, maybe the juries will like this more than the public. I don't know. I mean, it might finish 17th, last place. That's very possible. It might also do very well in the final. That's why it's a dark horse. That leaves the automatic finalists. Now, I'm tempted to talk about Germany, but quite frankly, I just can't see the German entry doing terribly well at all. No, I just, I just don't see it. Maybe... I'll talk about the German entry a bit more in a future video if my opinion changes and I suddenly think that Jendrik's in with a pretty good shout of making the top 10 in the final. I don't know. For now, though, there's only two here. I'm not going to talk about the UK because I'm being absolutely realistic here. As much as Embers is a cracking song and James Newman is going to perform it very well, I'm sure, realistically, this probably will finish in the bottom half. So, that leaves the host nation, the Netherlands, John Goo McCroy, Song 23, on Saturday the 22nd of May, with Birth of a New Age, lyrics in English and Sranan Tongo. Uh, this is underrated. It's so different, it's got a very different vibe to it. It's a very personal track to him. Grow, last year's effort, much better in my opinion. But, maybe Birth of a New Age is the sort of song that will end up getting more votes than Grow. I don't know. Um, good slot in the running order. It depends which countries end up around him. He'll perform it well. Very hard to say where the votes are going to come from. I mean, you've got to appreciate the sound. Um, I imagine we'll have, you know, that dance move on stage and everything. It's going to be maybe a very traditional type performance, if you see what I mean. It's very chilled out. I really like it. It is growing on me more and more. And I will no doubt listen to it again very soon. And like it even more. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the Dutch entry. Because some people are saying this is the weakest Dutch entry for years. Some people are saying that it's underrated. Some people are saying it's last in the final. Mixed responses for this one. That's why it's a dark horse. Because it might end up doing better than we all think. How will the juries respond? I just don't know. But I imagine they won't be completely ignoring it. The other uh, dark horse out of the automatic finalists is Spain. As much as I can see Spain finishing in the bottom five yet again, I mean they love the bottom five. Blas Canto, Voy a Quedarme. This is a beautiful ballad. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, we've heard things like this a million times before. Yes, we've had singers like Blas before. But there's nothing wrong with this song. Not at all. I think it's very nice, very pleasant, very touching. His vocals are great. If he nails those high notes live, that's surely got to be a few points in the bag. But once all of the finalists are known, and especially if Blass is drawn into the first half, that's just going to kill his chances, potentially. But this deserves some love. Absolutely. It deserves some appreciation because it's a really fine ballad and if he stages it well if his delegation pull out all the stops it could be a real moment on that rotterdam stage and i look forward to it it deserves some more attention than it's currently getting that's for sure anyway that's it what a ramble my dark horses of this year's contest as of this moment in time the 3rd of april let me know what you think have i missed out a country um, is there a country that you think might end up being a dark horse, but maybe isn't at the moment? Uh, do you think there's a country that actually is wildly overrated and won't do as well as we all think? Maybe San Marino, for example. Maybe Romania, for example. Maybe Bulgaria, for example. Whatever it is, 
leave a comment, let me know. Check out my other social media pages if you so wish. Apologies if the quality wasn't that great. And I'll be back with another Eurovision 2021 related video at some point in the near future, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you also uh, for the questions I had for the Q&A video that I filmed very recently. That was much appreciated too. And that really is it now. Roll on this year's contest, which is next month. It's coming ever closer. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and bye for now.